Welcome in everybody. In this video, we're going to look at round 16 leg one games of the Copa Libertadores tournament down in South America. These games will be played over three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from August 13th to 15th. We have three games on Tuesday, three more on Wednesday, and then two on Thursday. Of the 16 teams remaining, we have six countries and leagues represented here. Seven from Brazil, three from Argentina, two from Uruguay, two from Bolivia, one from Chile, and one from Colombia. Betting on South American soccer is a little different from what I usually try to do where I look for free-flowing games and, and teams where you can often bet goals from both sides. It's a little bit lower scoring here. If we look at the group stage, only three, game, or only three teams who advanced played to more over 2.5 totals than unders. Two went four and two to the over. Only one went five and one. There were seven that were in even three and three. Two went uh, four and two to the under and four went five and one to the under. Now, with some of the weaker teams out, the game's continuing to have more meaning here as we go further down the line. I would think that these games would get even closer, tighter, and maybe even lower scoring. Odds on the under for most of these games certainly reflect that, being heavily juiced in most cases. So I do have a lot of draw predictions coming up here where there's a little bit better value. Now, while you're listening, if you find this info helpful, be sure to help me out. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel to get more soccer predictions. Before you make any bets on any soccer leagues, be sure to check out signupexpert.com slash shred the spread to see a list of great customer sportsbook promos in your area. Be sure to grab all that free bonus bet money while you can for all these great offers. Let's start it off. On Tuesday here, we have Gremio and Fluminense. It's one of two all-Brazilian matchups in the round of 16. Gremio being right now 13th in the Brazilian league. Fluminense 18th in the league. Gremio were second in Group C in the group stage of this tournament. 3-1-2, and two, scored seven, allowed five. Fluminense were first in Group A, 4-2-0, and oh, nine goals for five goals allowed. Gremio has owned this matchup of late, winning 1-0 in June, 3-2 in December in each of the last seven games. Gremio won 3-1 to one this weekend, and they have only two losses, one in PKs in their last nine games. Their games have been tight, going 4-1 and 6-2 and and to the under 2.5 of late. Fluminense lost 2-0 this weekend. They have one win in four. They've allowed multiple goals in three of four, but they have four wins in seven, and only two losses in nine. But then it's just four wins in 17 games as well. Saturday's 2-0 loss is one of only two times in 10 games where they have not scored. Fluminense haven't lost in 11 straight knockout round games in this tournament going back over multiple seasons, but they have a poor record versus this opponent. They were 3-3 three and three to the over-unders in the group stage, and Gremio was 5-1 and one to the under. Could be tight. Gremio seems to always get the edge here when these teams meet, so let's go Gremio to win, plus 110 odds. Next up, Colo Colo and Junior. Colo Colo fourth in the Chile Premier Division. Junior 13th in the Colombia Categoria Primera A, but they have only played four games, and this game's this last weekend's game was postponed. If these teams have not met since way back in 1994. Colo Colo advanced as second in Group B with only one win. They were one, three, and two, scoring just four, but only conceding five as well. So naturally, their games were very tight. Uh, they just barely moved on, though, moving on by one away goal. Junior top Group D with just two wins themselves. They were only two, four, and zero. Oh, seven goals for four goals allowed. Also. Pretty close games. Colo Colo, they have been rolling though. They drew nil-nil this weekend. They are undefeated in eight with only one loss in 14 and two losses in 19. Just twice in 14 games have they not scored. And they scored multiple goals in five of their last eight. Junior's last game was 2-2 on August 4th. On one hand, they have just one win in six. On the other hand, they have just three losses in 16. While two of four Columbia League games have gone over 2.5. Their trend has been unders with the under 2.5 going 12-4. In their recent games. Colo Colo has, has not made it to the round of 16 since 2018. Junior not since 2011. This could be a tight game. Under 2.5 went 5-1 and one in the group stage for Colo Colo. Also 5-1 and one for Junior. Both saw their past five games in the tournament go under as well. So this is one of those games that should be an under. It looks like an under. The under 2.5 though I see a minus 200 odds at bed 365. So unless you want to throw that into a parlay, probably the draw is the better bet plus 225. Next up, San Lorenzo, Atletico Mineiro. San Lorenzo, 25th in the Argentina League. Atletico Mineiro, 9th in Brazil. They've not met since 2018. San Lorenzo were 2-2-2, two, two two, second in Group F. Six goals scored, six goals allowed. Mineiro were first in Group G, 5-0-1. They scored 14, allowed just six. That was tied for the most goal scored of any team in the group stage. San Lorenzo is uh, lagging right now, down near the bottom of the Argentine League. Overall, they, are, they have 1-0 and 3-1 losses in their recent games in all competitions. And they're winless in four, but they have just two losses in seven. But then it's only five wins across all competitions in their last 20. The under 2.5 has gone five and one of late. 
Atletico Mineiro drew nil-nil this weekend. They're 4-3-1 and one in their past eight. They've scored in 7 of 8, 12 of 14. Top scorer Hulk, third in the Brazilian scoring race right now, could miss out as he's been injured. I'm going to say this again could be a tight game. Let's give the edge to Atletico Mineiro, but just barely. To be safe, we'll go Atletico Mineiro. Draw, no bet. So if they win, you get the win. They draw, it's a push. Coming in at minus 138. Next up, Panero and the strongest Panero. They are in the Uruguay Premier Division, but it's not started yet the, for the recent season. The strongest find themselves second in the Bolivia Primera Division in the Clausura. These teams have not met since 2018. Panero was second in Group G at 4 0 and 2, 12 goals for, 5 goals allowed. The strongest first in Group C, 3 1 and 2, 8 goals scored, 6 allowed. Clausura in Uruguay hasn't started, but Panero has still been involved in many games, and they have only two losses across their last 18 in all competitions, and they have just one loss in regulation as well. Only once in 24 games have they not got on the score sheet. The last game was a 1-1 draw with Nacional in the intermediate round final, where they lost in PKs 8-7 very recently on August 4th. The Strongest have won 2-1, 5-0 in recent games. They're undefeated in four, have only three losses in 13, and just three losses in 19. Penarol are big, minus 334 favorites, and they could try, uh, and you could try to add maybe the under uh, for a same game parlay here, because unless you're going to throw Penarol into a parlay, that's not going to get you very many, uh, very good odds. So if you combine Penarol to win and under four goals into a same game parlay, you can come in at minus 110 odds over at Bet365. Next, it's another all-Brazilian matchup, Botafogo and Palmeiras. Botafogo first in Brazil, Palmeiras fourth. Botafogo were second in Group D in the group, in, during the group stage. Three, one, and two, scored seven, allowed six. Palmeiras undefeated in Group F, four, two, and oh. They scored 14. That was tied for the most goals scored in the group stage. They allowed just five. Recent meetings have seen Botafogo win 1-0 in July, Palmeiras 4-3 in November. Botafogo had been in good form, but recently across all competitions, they have a 2-2 draw, 3-0 loss, 1-1 draw, and a 4-1 win. 1-0 loss and 3-2 loss in their recent games. So that's just one win in those in that time, and it came against Brazil's worst team, Atletico Goianes. They have not kept any clean sheets as well in any of their last six games. Palmeiras hasn't lost in three, but their results have been 1-1, 1-0, and 1-1. And they are only 1-2-3 and three with just one win in their last six, keeping just one clean sheet in that time themselves and never scoring more than one goal in any of those games. So again, I would say an under is certainly in play here. I see that at minus 167 or the draw, plus 225. Perhaps both teams to score, plus 100. We'll go for a draw here, plus 225 odds for this one. Next up, C.A. Talares de Cordoba and River Plate. De Cordoba, 7th in Ar Argentina right now. River Plate, ninth in Argentina in this all-Argentine matchup. They, between these teams, when they've last played, they drew 2-2 in March. River Plate won 1-0 in October in their recent meetings. That is River's only win, though, in their last six against this opponent. Cordoba were second in Group B at 4-1-1, scoring 10, allowing 6. River Plate top Group H, 5-1-0. They scored 12 they allowed just three, and that was tied for the fewest goals allowed of any team during the group stage. Cordoba can suddenly neither win or lose. It's been all draws of late. They have four straight 1-1 ties, plus a 3-0 loss to complete their recent competitive games. So very few wins, lots of draws. River themselves, though, have drawn 1-1 and 0-0 in recent games, and they too only have one win in six. They've at least scored a goal in four or five recent games. Once again, this could be the under. I see that at minus 163, or again, the draw. The draw for this game is actually the shortest odds of any of the eight games going down this week at plus 200 odds. And when the draw is that low of odds, usually that's a sign that this will be a close game. So let's go draw again, plus 200. Next up, Nacional de Football and Sao Paulo. Nacional plays in the Uruguay Primera Division, which has not started yet their new season. Sao Paulo, fifth in the Brazil Serie A. There's no meetings right now since 2008. Nacional were second in Group H, 3-1-2, and two, scoring 8, allowing 7. Sao Paulo won Group B at 4-1-1, one one, scoring 10, allowing 3. That was the joint, joint fewest goals allowed in the group stage. Nacional's last game was a 1-1 draw with Panarel in the intermediate round final where they won in PKs 8-7, very recent, August 4th. That makes them 15-2-3 in their last 20, scoring and, and scoring a goal in 19-20 of 20 and keeping clean sheets in 4-6. of six and allowing only three goals in their last seven. Sao Paulo won one nothing this weekend, and they are 3-1-0 in their last four, 8-3-2 in 13. And they've kept a clean sheet in four straight and also in six of eight. Only one time in five games have they scored more than one goal in a game, though. 
This again could be tight, could be the under, that's only minus 175, so let's go for the draw. Also very low, uh, short price odds at plus 210. And finally, we have Flamengo and Bolivar. Flamengo's third in the Brazilian league, Bolivar first in the Bolivian league in the Clausura right now. At three, one and two, Flamengo were second in their group F, uh, group E, 11 goals four, and just four conceded. Bolivar finished ahead of Flamengo for first in that group at four, one and one, scoring 13, allowing nine, giving us the only rematch from the group stage. The nine goals allowed is also the most of any team that advanced. One team allowed seven, and the next most for uh, multiple teams had allowed six. So Bolivar's goals allowed, certainly the worst through the group stage. In their group stage games, Bolivar won two to one in Bolivia in April. Flamengo won four nothing in Brazil in May. Bolivar's group stage games saw the highest average goals, 3.7, and they were the highest over team, the only team to go five and one to the over. Flamengo is winless in three, though. After back-to-back 1-0 -back losses and a 1-1 draw, they had won four straight prior to that, scoring two goals in all four of those games. Bolivar is rolling. We have 2 nothing, 1 nothing, 4 nothing wins of late, and they're 9-4-2 and two in their past 15. Only twice in 12 games have they not got on the score sheet. Bolivar, though, won't have that elevation advantage playing in La Paz here, and odds makers see a straightforward Flamengo win as they are massively favored at minus 900 money line odds. So you're going to have to ask Flamengo, Flamengo to win by two or three. And even that is only going to probably be good for a parlay piece unless you were to try to add Bolivar in there to get on the score sheet. So something like a Flamengo and to win and both teams to score. So if you're looking for a parlay piece, Flamengo minus one and a half, minus 268, Flamengo minus two, minus 183. So you probably have to go to Flamengo minus... 2.5 to win by three or more if you wanted a straight bet there. So while surely we won't have as many draws as I have picked out, if you just hit a couple of those, you should be doing okay by the end of these leg one games. I'll also create just one sort of fun parlay here, three games, and we'll up all of the under 2.5s to even under 3.5 to be super safe. Colo Colo Jr. under 3.5. Cordoba River Plate under 3.5. Nacional de Football in Sao Paulo under 3.5. You won't get a lot but it's minus 135. If you don't see, we don't see too much scoring, it should likely hit. Other options maybe to include in parlays, Gremio simply to score, Penarol in the strongest over 1.5, Flamengo to simply score over 1.5 goals themselves if you want to mix and match some of those options. Let me know what you like though in this week's Copa Libertadores, whether it be straight bets, parlays, teams to advance, teams to win the tournament, or anything else. Give this video a like on your way out and I'll see you soon again as we have more European soccer action kicking off this weekend.